I read on, I think, one of the news channels uh, this morning that one of the teammates and the stars of the show, Joffre, seems to have misplaced his uh, World Cup medal. I'm assuming you've got yours safe and sound. Yeah, oh, man. Safe and sound, yeah. It's kept in me, you know, probably the only room in the house which I'm allowed to have as mine, which is the um, is the study, so to speak. And, uh, yeah, that's safely in a place in there, you know, pride, pride and joy. But, um, you know, how he's misplaced that, I'll never know. It's so Joffre, that. So Joffre. Just that, you know, he's oh, so laid back. Another one, isn't he? Oh, exactly, exactly. But um, I'm sure it'll turn up. I'm sure it'll turn up. A massive moment in your career was, um, you know, that England debut. I believe you've made your debut in New Zealand. That cap presentation. How did that feel, mate? And, and who awarded you your first England cap? Yeah, it was obviously a pretty special moment. Um, NASA Hussain presented it to me and Matthew Parkinson, I remember, in New Zealand. Um, he made a very special speech, which I reckon I'll remember for the rest of my life. Um, and yeah, just having that cap in your own cap number is really cool. And then putting it on your head for the first time and actually walking out onto the field was something I'll always remember. Um, but yeah, the day as a whole was obviously pretty special. And then in Cape Town, where I made my one-day debut, that's where my dad was born as well. So that was a pretty special day. Oh, awesome. Anything, did you do anything different that particular morning? You know, your first game, you knew you were playing, you'd been told by the captain you're in the team. Um, did you eat more? Did you eat less? Could you eat? How did you cope with it? Um, I didn't sleep actually that well, um, that well the night before, which was a bit of a shame. Um, but obviously all the nerves and energy user like overthinking what's going to happen am I going to get a first baller or you know what do I just think of me probably you overthink too much but no it was a it was a great day and something I'll always remember um so yeah that was pretty special and I was no, and we fielded first as well but wish but I wish we batted first because obviously you get that out of the way um but yeah a few but a few of the first balls were a bit nervous and then after that it was back to normal so yeah it was good that's interesting you say that because I've always thought you know, when you're playing in a particularly big game and your main skill is batting, don't you want to get in the field just to get a feel for the game? And you know, oh, it's all, then, you know, you can make you you can make a mistake field, and it's not the end of your day. Yeah, but then you're worrying about batting. Um, so that's for me. I prefer to bat first, get it out of the way with. Probably for the yeah. mentality of the dressing room. You know, you are a squad now, aren't you? Of probably, what, 15, yeah. 17, 18 guys that can all play any yeah. given day? Yeah, I think that that's, like you say, I think that's helped the environment, it's helped the team. You know, it certainly helped us drive forward as a as a group. Um, you know, the competition for places are high. Um, and of course, you never want to miss out for being for being rested, but then it also shows that you've been valued. Um, so, yeah, it's a great, it's a great um, group to be a part of. And as you said, it's certainly a squad mentality. Um, you know, we had 15 players at that World Cup that obviously collected medals, but unfortunately a few guys, other guys that didn't make the fifth, final 15 could have easily been there. And, you know, they were almost, you know, such a shame that they couldn't be a part of it really, because they certainly probably deserved it, having been a part of that team for the last, I don't know, three years or so leading into the World Cup. Um, so it just shows it's certainly a squad effort. And I think that's the way, you know, in, in first case, it was it was Trevor Bayliss and, and, and Morgs obviously rooted with the test stuff. Um, and now, obviously, with Chris Silverwood taking over, they're certainly keen to keep that going and keep that mentality as a team. In terms of, like, shot selection, something, again, that completely blows my mind. Um, thought process um, when you're reverse sweeping seamers, is it something that you that you practice a lot in the nets? Um, does it... Does it take a lot of bottle to do it from your perspective? Because I know oh. I tried it once in the net and I've got six stitches in my chin. <laughs> um, I've played hockey since I was like two or three years old and I think that's <clears throat> been the main reason to why I can sweep and reverse sweep probably better than I play the full defence. Um, but yeah, that's kind of helped me um, play it probably so well. I don't really have... If I get out, for me, I don't feel like it's the end of the world. Hopefully I'll... Try another chance along the line so for me I just kind of back myself and if it comes off it does and if it doesn't then um, you might look like a bit of a tool but yeah I just walk off and accept it. 
Yeah, to be fair, I did see a wry smile uh, come across your face when you said the old 2020 championship season might be put back a little bit. No <laughs> nipping Red Bulls in April at Trent Bridge. Oh, I'll have a, yeah, I know. Or off you. No, we don't play it this year. But yeah, that would be. Oh, that, that, that's going to be a moment, isn't it? That will be a moment. Me, oh, I'll over. probably be at, least, I'll be at least 40 by the time I get to bowl at you. What a, what a challenge oh. that's going to be for you. Trigo versus Somerset. Could you imagine that getting out to somebody who's old enough to be your dad? <laughs> 110. Imagine that. 